Hungry Dad. Welcome to Hungry Dad, your guided tour through the delicate and often overwhelming balancing act between food indulgences and social acceptance. And now, as always, here are your hosts, Rod Budget and Hugh Gallon. Hello and welcome to episode 28 of Hungry Dads. I'm Rod Budget. I'm Hugh Gallon. Tonight, Rod, I would like to start with a new and hopefully recurring segment. Tastemakers. Taste makers. Taste makers. On Tastemakers, we'll profile a personality, a food influencer, who we believe informs society's views on food and is the face of food to the public. I'd like to introduce the subject of our first Tastemakers segment with a clip. Rod, could you play CM1? Oh, me so hungry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what should me eat? Fruit or cookie? Fruit or cookie? Fruit, cookie, fruit, cookie. Oh, this tough decision. Wait, what me saying? Me cookie monster. This no brainer. Me eat cookie. That was Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster, steeped in controversy, iconic figure in the cookie world. I'm not going to sit here and pretend Cookie Monster is a real person. That would be silly. But the character is real, the controversy is real, and the struggle is real. You heard that clip. Cookie Monster is sitting there looking at fruit, looking at a cookie, trying to make a decision. A few weeks ago, We posted a compilation of uh, some of our episodes. We called it the Tao of the Hungry Dad. And and in it, we highlighted some of our Hungry Dad philosophies. A few of those being a balancing act between food indulgences and social acceptance and the conflict between the tasty foods we love and trying to be somewhat responsible. That is Hungry Dads. Does that sound like anybody we just heard in that clip? Oh, yes, Rod. We are Cookie Monster. And Cookie Monster is us. That's a big compliment. I'm glad to hear that. Cookie Monster's a great guy. He's definitely conflicted in this day and age. I think in the past, he was just kind of a cookie, crazy guy. But as he's aged, as we're in a new, brave world, he has those conflicts just like we do. And I'm proud to say that I am very similar to the great Cookie Monster. You you mentioned how he has these conflicts. Um, are, you, are you familiar with what I'm going to call the Cookie Monster controversy from the last several years? Absolutely, yes. We have the young kids, as everybody knows. Um, Even, I think, if I didn't have kids, I would have heard of it, because I'm a pretty big fan of the monster, and he's been embroiled in some controversy, for sure. Right. So, in 2005, it sort of started. Cookie Monster was in a segment that was titled, uh, A Cookie is a Sometimes Food. The critics, the media, basically said that this Sometimes Food song was replacing C is for Cookie uh, as Cookie Monster's catchphrase. And it was going to replace Nom 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 as Cookie Monster's primary matter of speech. Play CM2, which is a clip from the A Cookie is a Sometimes Food segment. Me get it! Fruit! Anytime food! That's right! Cookie! Sometime food! That's right! Yeah, yeah, yeah! But you know what? (laughs) Right. Right now? Hmm? Is some time cookie. Now this was in 2005, and as we heard, Cookie Monster acknowledges outright that a cookie is a sometimes food. And uh, now in the end, he does chow down on the cookies. This caught a, a, a more than a little bit of a backlash in the media. The media seemed to grab onto this idea. What are your thoughts on Cookie Monster kind of reeling in his tendencies? for cookies and acknowledging that a cookie is a sometimes food. Do you think this is a betrayal of the character? Do you think this is a a positive step in evolution? What are your thoughts, Rod? I think reeling it in is an evolution of the character. I mean, part of me wants to say that it's ridiculous and, you know, Cookie Monster is a monster. Monsters don't reel things in. They devour things. He was meant to devour cookies. But listen, times change. He's been around for what? probably 40 years now. I think reeling it in, there's nothing terrible about that. Acknowledging that, you know, maybe you shouldn't just sit in front of a massive plate of cookies and shovel them in to your mouth. You know, given the rise in childhood obesity, I don't think it's a terrible thing to come out and try to educate children that it's bad to just shovel cookies into your mouth. Even though, obviously, Children shouldn't be getting their nutritional guidance from a monster who appears on TV. Do you think there was any actual danger in having a lovable character who who devoured cookies remorselessly? I mean, I really want to say no, but 
I watched a lot of Cookie Monster growing up, and I eat a lot of cookies <laughs> and always have, so I can't use that as a proof point against it. Here's the thing. Parents should be educating their children on what's healthy, what's not healthy, but I think a lot of times it's not happening, or kids are left on their own or just don't get that parental guidance. And listen, our kids sitting in front of the TV watching Cookie Monster while they're ripping open a bag of Oreos and shoveling in their mouth because that's what Cookie Monster is doing? Probably not. But Sesame Street is an educational-based program. You know, that's its roots. So you got to look at it from that perspective as well. They're trying to educate. They're trying to lead children to be informed and lead better lives. So from that regard, I think it's legit. Yeah, I I, I think I, I tend to agree with you. I, I would just, my, my take on it is that I don't think there is any danger in Cookie Monster loving cookies. And so I don't think reeling him away from cookies was the strength of the evolution. What I think was good is that there's a message out there that vegetables and fruits are are good uh, and part of the diet. So I don't necessarily mind the love of cookies. I think the healthy part is that there there's an additional love for other things. Yeah, I agree. And maybe I missed this. Maybe you know, but... Why not just introduce another character who kind of playfully goes along with Cookie Monster, like the Apple Fairy or Vegetable Vinny or something like that? But as far as I know, that didn't happen. Are you aware of anything like <laughs> Children's that? Children's Television Workshop, are you listening? Rod Budget just came up with the Apple Fairy and Vegetable, Vegetable Vinny, Vinny like that. I mean, he wasn't – he didn't know this was going to be the discussion. These are these are the Muppets that he can just pull out at a moment's notice. And that's out there now. So if this appears on Sesame <laughs> Street now – What is Vegetable Vinny's catchphrase, Rod? <laughs> hey, I got to some vegetables not, for you. You want some vegetables? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that quick. <laughs> Eat this carrot or I'll kick you in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. I like eat this carrot. I'll kick you in the butt. That's vegetable, Vinny. Uh, copyright, hungry dads. Uh, we're gonna do our own children's show, not to compete with Sesame Street, but to go along with him and uh, vegetable. Vinny. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of an Oscar Grouch hybrid, but vegetable. Oh my goodness! All right, I'm derailed now officially. Well done. So back to Cookie Monster. Uh, yeah, we heard his segment about cookies being a sometimes food. Cookie Monster acknowledges that cookies are sometimes food, but yet in the end, he kind of uncontrollably eats those cookies. The Children's Television Workshop workshop in Sesame Street um, picked up on this backlash. It was getting some media attention, and they responded. In addition, they continued the message, uh, increasing kind of the scope of Cookie Monster's message on healthy eating. So in 2006, uh, there was another segment. Uh, This is uh, Matt Lauer interviewing Cookie Monster. That's CM3, if you could play that, Rod. Isn't it true that just moments ago, you chose to eat a bowl of fruit instead of a cookie? Oh, yeah, yeah, but, really? uh, but that was... So are no we going to have to change your name now? Should we start calling you Fruit Monster? And there you have it. Cookie Monster likes fruit, not cookies. You members of media blow story way out of proportion. Me still like cookies. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Then- Okay, so there you can hear them kind of taking it right on. You members of the media are blowing this way out of proportion. I'm still Cookie Monster. I just happen to also eat some fruit. It's worth noting at this point that Cookie Monster is kind of a unique character in the food world here. Uh, he isn't a mascot. We we sit here, we've talked about food mascots a lot. You know, the Noid for pizza and uh, Wendell for Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And you really touched on the bad ones there. <laughs> who, who, uh, yeah, I guess I, I missed on the jo- Jolly Green Giant, um, Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury Doughboy is the... Is the- is the best of all time. Absolutely. Um, so these characters, and they are beloved, and we have genuine affection or feelings and emotions towards them, but we all know that they are there to sell us a product. They were created for that purpose, and so we take that in, I think, as part of their personality and their message. Cookie Monster is not controlled by Big Cookie. Uh, the cookie people are not putting the words in Cookie Monster's mouth. It is the Children's Television Workshop, PBS, you know, uh, Henson, Muppets, you know, the, these are uh, not looking to sell you cookies uh, or vegetables or anything else. Yeah, I've seen that interview and I think it's great because, I mean, they could have easily gone very scripted and Cookie Monsters, I like fruit, 
I still kind of like cookies, but I really like fruit. But in true kind of Sesame Street tone and Muppets tone, they had a lot of fun with it. And myself and everybody else out there thought it would be kind of like an apologetic message of, I like fruit, cookies are okay sometimes. But Cookie Monster just came out. I was like, I like cookies. Yep. I like cookies. I like cookies. <laughs> and it was great. I love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I think there's that, that, that irreverent tone that they've given these characters. And they still stuck with their, their core message, which is vegetables are there and they're important. But Cookie Monster, I, amongst all the critics and all the backlash, I think what was missed uh, is, are these nuances that – they never betrayed Cookie Monster's true cookie yeah. nature. Cookie it was Cookie Monster giving the figurative middle finger kind of to Matt Lauer in America, I, which is I great. absolutely agree. And so to that point, you said they're starting to have fun with it. And so Sesame Street brought Cookie Monster's message a little bit broader. The next clip is from 2008 when Stephen Colbert spoke with Cookie Monster. That's CM4, if you could play that. <laughs> Mr. Monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why have you abandoned cookies? Well, first, me, me not abandon cookies. Me love cookies. You eat cookie after you eat healthy food like soup or vegetable. Yeah, yeah. Me have crazy times in 70s and 80s. <laughs> me like me like the Robert Downey Jr. of cookies. But 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 me never only ate just cookies. No, no, me eat everything. Me not picky. So there we got Cookie Monster. I, I, again, you know, talk about being irreverent. Talk about pushing against that backlash in what I think is a really smart, clever way. Colbert is the perfect place to do that. That show is irreverence. That show is ironic. And uh, I, I, I love that clip. That All these clips are, are cut down quite a bit um, just for time. I don't want to sit here and just play other people's clips. But uh, ch- go to YouTube, check all these out. Uh, each one is longer and more entertaining than what we're than what we're putting out. So yeah, Cookie Monster again maintains his core message. So then also you heard at the end of that clip, Cookie Monster says, "I eat everything," or I think he said, "Me eat everything," and. I think that's a, an interesting point because I remember from my youth, yes, he loved to eat cookies, but he also ate lampposts and the moon and the desk and Kermit's hat and anything else he could get his hands on. So why wouldn't he eat the fruits and the vegetables and everything else? So I'm going to maintain that Cookie Monster eating is his main thing, anything and everything. So uh, why not fruits and vegetables? So are you saying it's okay for kids to eat lampposts? I don't remember any rash of lamppost eating children influenced by Cookie Monster. So after that, another smart move by the people who are putting the words in Cookie Monster's mouth. I don't know if Children's Television Workshop and Sesame Street and Cookie Monster shook the controversy with that, or if they did shake it, I think they might have decided to perpetuate it a little bit more. In 2012, Cookie Monster expressed his feelings in song where his passion really came to an apex. Um, if you can play CM5, uh, it's Cookie Monster's song, Me Am What Me Am. Hey, me am what me am. Not veggie monster. Not one scintilla. Me love to eat cookie, chocolatey fudge, or lemon vanilla. So what if me like okra, eggplant, or zucchini? Me am what me am. He's not vegetable, Vinny. That's for sure. <laughs> and he's not veggie monster. He says, I'm me not veggie monster. And this is, that is a direct shot at what some of the headlines were. Uh, there was a lot of talk about Cookie Monster has become Veggie Monster. It's a bit, total betrayal. Here is where Cookie Monster in song, and by what I genuinely find to be a fairly touching song, really lays it out there and, and says to whoever his critics are, look, me am what me am. I, what do you want me to be? He can't deny his general nature, and that nature is to enjoy some fruits and vegetables sometimes. So it almost makes the critics look like real jerks. <laughs> yeah, he's burying his soul there. There's no doubt about it. He's really just coming from the heart and saying, hey, if you don't love me for who I am, don't love me. And I, and I think, you know, we talk a lot here about marketing. And of course, marketing is usually talked about from a, from a for-profit standpoint. But looking at this progression of a message from Sesame Street, I got to give them a lot of compliment for for writing this out, I think, in a way that was generally, not generally, positive for society and promoting health, while still 
maintaining the integrity of their character and maintaining buzz. These are the kind of things corporations really want to do. And and the not-for-profit is a corp- corporation, but uh, you know, people who are trying to sell things, uh, the food marketers, they're trying to do this same thing. They're trying to look positive, putting out a message. And I think I think they nailed it with Cookie Monster here and as an analysis of marketing, A+. Plus. In the end, Rod, what do you think? Is Cookie Monster's evolution an indication that the health nuts have won an, a, a ruination? Or I think we agree it's not a ruination of a character, but it was was this an indication of society? You said it had changed, uh, and this was maybe changing with the times. But is this a betrayal of the character? Do you think that our childhoods have been stolen from us in any way? I don't think so at all. As I said, I think Cookie Monster was fairly defiant in his stance. I think it was entertaining. It was funny. I, you know, at no point did he ever say okay, don't eat cookies, I don't like cookies. If anything, it was the opposite. He defended cookies. He continues to defend cookies. He's just a little more rational about it, perhaps, than he once was. And hey, if he has to be a little more rational and explain to everybody that you shouldn't really eat a giant platter of cookies in order to appease the health nuts, then I don't think it's a big deal. In fact, it was quite entertaining, as we heard. Rod, we tend to agree on this, it's apparent, um, but I'm willing to guess that there are still critics out there. And so if any of those critics are are listening to us who feel that Cookie Monster was ruined by all this, um, I'd like to, to listen to the next clip. This is uh, a send-up of Aerosmith and Run DMC's Walk This Way from 1987, 18 years before the 2005 controversy hit. at CM6, if you could play that. <laughs> Well, me known for eating cookie when me don't fish out hooky trying to throw loyal fans a curve. What's he doing eating fish or vegetable dish? Man, he sure got lots of nerve. Well, me answer you straight when you're filling a plate, taking only cookies all wrong. Cause you also got to eat fruit or veggies or meat if you want to be healthy and strong. Yo, healthy food, boy, it tastes so good. Wow, that that's the smoking gun right there. You found the smoking gun. So here's Cookie in 1987 rapping to what I consider to be a truly faithful rendition, not a parody, but a musical homage to Aerosmith and Run DMC's Walk This Way, speaking to the children about healthy food. Rod, if that weren't enough, I want you to play CM7 from 1974. Cookies? We no eat cookies now. No cookies? I thought all you ate was cookies. No, wants to know can eat only cookies and be healthy. Oh? First, me eat meat and fish. They give me protein and strength. I see. Then now you're going to eat cookies. No, now eat vegetables like carrots and peas. Iron give me vitamins. Me eat fruit. It give me energy. Now milk for good bones and teeth. Aha! Now for dessert? Right. Cookies! So listen, critics, Cookie Monster didn't change. We changed, society changed, and media changed. Cookie Monster's message has been consistent throughout time. Cookie Monster has always, since 1974, had what clearly is an appreciation for the fact that he needs to eat healthy food. He also has an uncontrollable urge to eat cookies. Rod, as I said before, this is you, this is me, this is every hungry dad. We logically know what we can and should be doing, but we cannot help ourselves from eating cookies. We can try to control it, but it, if we don't keep ourselves in check, we would just eat cookies all the time. And this is the struggle Cookie Monster has been living with uh, since his inception. And I want to salute Cookie Monster tonight. He is the public face for this delicate balance of indulgence versus responsibility. Hungry Dad salutes you, Cookie Monster. Thank you very much. Did you uncover all that stuff? Just like so, yeah, basically, I, I I had some help. I definitely I had originally been thinking about this. Frankly, well before we started doing this podcast, I remember hearing that song "Me Am Who Me Am" and being honestly moved by it in the fact of what a middle finger it seemed to be to these critics who were all angry about Veggie Monster and and very uh, uh, critical of it. And I thought, wow, that was really an effective song and an effective move. And then I started backtracking from there kind of informally until I decided I wanted to do an episode about this. And then the internet, uh, I've got to give credit to Muppet Wiki. All the clips were there online. Um, They're just not uh, as well known. Yeah, I think not only is this our first tastemakers, this is our first Hungry Dads expose. Hungry Dads! Visit our website at HungryDads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Hungry underscore Dads. This has been a Hungry Dads production. Festival Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> you scared. <laughs>
We'll sketch eat, out vegetables. Eat this carrot off, kick you in the butt. That's it. I will animate that. I will. Yeah. I like cookie. I like cookie. I like cookie. I like cookie.